Welcome back to Educator.com, Introduction to C++. Today we're going to talk about a number of little things that we're also going to talk about again later in the, in the class. But we want to get started in terms of, you know, get a compiler, get going. So we want to get a compiler. We need to get a compiler of your very own. Put it on your machine. I hope you have a machine. If, you're not, if you don't have a machine, what are you watching this on? Okay, you've got a machine. You have to get a compiler. Get an integrated development editor, or call an IDE. I highly recommend that over some other editor. Or you can get a text editor. Sometimes it's good to have a text editor. You can edit things outside of the IDE. And we'll write a C++ program. We'll talk about program structure, brief introduction to that. We'll talk about compiling, linking, and running your code. Um, some build tools, basically make and whatever else is out there. Then we'll have your second C++ program, your third C++ program, and we'll get started right now. Okay, we need to get a C++ compiler. The one I recommend is the GNU C compiler. Uh, which stand, which is GCC, never mind what GNU stands for. But it's every man's workhorse. It's been around since the, the, uh, for, since the 70s or 80s. Um, it's, it's free. They, the, the GNU people basically launched open source as you know it today. And a lot of things are available in open source. It doesn't necessarily mean it's free, but in many cases it's, it's easily available without having to spend a whole lot of money. We can get GNU for Windows. Most of you are probably running a Windows machine. So you can get something from uh, the SigWin project, and they emulate a POSIX system, which is a type of Unix system. This is where you can get it from. Or you can get the MinGW, which is the minimalist GNU for Windows, and you can get it from their website. Now, I'll be using this one for our class, the MinGW. Now you can also get Microsoft Visual Studio. There's a Visual Studio Express, which is free, or there's a paid version, which adds more features and more support and different things like that. Um, just keep in mind, you may have to do special configurations to write standalone code, as opposed to code that hooks into .NET and other Microsoft goodies. And of course, you can get that from Microsoft's website. Now we have a quick thing here for setting up MinGW. It's a little tricky. Uh, you download it, you install it, it puts everything into a particular location, and you will need to worry about your execution path. And we're not going to talk about this. There's one, we have a download file that you can download that has all this instructions that you can work at, look at, and you can get MinGW on your system and compiling. This is how you test it, how you run it compile something for a specific type. And we'll talk about a little bit more of this later on today. Now, if you're not on Windows, you have Red Hat, Fedora. There's, there's, there's a number of Linux out, systems out there. There's also Unix systems out there. I'm not going to worry about Unix systems. Um, your Red Hat system, or Fedora, is one style of Linux. And this is how you get it. If it's not already on the system, very often it, it comes with it already. So you log in as the root user, which I hope you know how to do for your machine. Or if it's not your machine, get whoever owns it to, or administrates it to t take care of this for you. And this is the command line you would run from a command line window. Don't try to go into GNOME or KDE and all those other um, Windows emulators that works on it. You have to get a, open a command line window and type this command as the root user. Ubuntu, based on Debian, is on a, another very popular Linux distribution. There are many distributions uh, of Linux that are based on one or the other of these. And this is the it's same that matters, same thing. Get, get a command line window, start typing in the commands. These are the commands that you would type to get that installed on your machine. If you're on a Macintosh, you have to go to the Macintosh website, register as a developer, which is free, it's not a big deal. They'll just send you an email every once in a while about all the wonderful new things they're selling. And you want to download Xcode, 
make sure you get the right version for whatever version operating system you're using. Now we have an integrated development um, environment, the IDE. Eclipse is my favorite. There's a bunch of other ones out there. Um, you get the Eclipse CDT, which is the C++ development tooling. And it requires the installation of a compiler. And again, we're, I'll be using MinGW for the class. So go to this website, www.eclipse.org slash CDT to get the CDT uh, uh, version of Eclipse. Um, Eclipse is very easy to install. You download it, you uncompress the file, you locate the Eclipse executable, and you run it. You're done. That's all there is to it. If you already have Eclipse because you've been using Java or something else out there, you can go to the Help menu, Install New Software, select all available sites. Now, if you've never done this before, it may take a little while to install because what it will do, it will go to the Eclipse website and it will download all available sites. So give it a couple of minutes. Once it's been populated, select Programming Languages, and then select C, C++ Development Tools, and that will click that, OK, everything else, and you'll get the CDT downloaded and added to your existing Eclipse um, setup. If you have an older version, here's a website you can go to get it just for the older version, but you probably should be better off just get a newer version. It doesn't take up that much space on your disk, and you usually want to have the new, latest version of things anyway. Now, if you don't have an IDE, if you can't use an IDE for whatever reason, there's various editors you can get. On Windows, there's Notepad. And that's, if you're really desperate, because Notepad is, it's got problems. You don't want to use Notepad. There's Notepad++, which is available for free. There's their website, notepad slash plus, or, or dash plus dash plus dot org. There's something called Notetab. There's their website. I prefer Programmer's Notepad for no particular reason. It's this one that I happen to use. It's pnotepad.org. A lot of people swear by Emacs. It has almost a cult following, especially in the Unix Linux world. You can get a version of Emacs to run on your PC or on your Macintosh if you want to give it a try, find out what all the hullabaloo is, is about it and use that. Or if you're already familiar with Emacs from working with Linux or Unix or something like that, just get Emacs and use it. I don't care. Or you can get Eclipse and just use that. Um, Vim is a cute little program that's available on all Unix, all Linux systems. Um, It'll either be Vim or VI. Vim basically is the open source version of VI. And you can also get that when you download MinGW onto your PC if you want to give it a try. Um, if you're on the PC, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're on Linux, sometimes it's the only way to go. So it's available on Linux. Just learn how to use it.